Alachua County's natural beauty and spirit of its people have inspired many artists. One of those artists is Pulitzer Prize winning author Marjorie Kennan Rawlings. When Rawlings moved to Cross Creek in 1928, she found her literary voice. To this day, that voice is still relevant and forever intertwined with Alachua County. In March 2005, Alachua County remembered the life and work of this extraordinary writer during Women's History Month with this biographical profile presented by Alachua County Chairwoman Paula Delaney. Even as a child, Marjorie Kennan Rawlings knew she would become a writer but it wasn't until she settled in Alachua County that she found the inspiration that would make her one of the greatest American writers of the last century. She was born in Washington, D.C. in 1896, the daughter of patent attorney Arthur Kennan and Ida Mae Kennan. Her mother encouraged her to write from an early age, and she was a regular contributor to the children's pages of local newspapers. At the age of 11, she won a children's writing contest sponsored by the Washington Post. Rawlings' father died in 1914 and the family moved to Madison, Wisconsin. There she enrolled at the University of Wisconsin, graduating in 1918. She married fellow student and aspiring writer Charles Rawlings the following year. The two would spend the next nine years in New York writing for newspapers and attempting to publish poetry and works of fiction. In 1928, the couple purchased a 40-acre orange grove in Cross Creek. Here Rawlings would find a sense of inner peace that had eluded her in New York. As she later wrote in the autobiographical book, Cross Creek, we need above all, I think, a certain remoteness from urban confusion, and while this can be found in other places, Cross Creek offers it with such beauty and grace that once entangled with it, no other place seems possible to us. The creek satisfies a thing that had gone hungry and unfed in me since childhood days. When Rawlings and husband Charles divorced in 1933, she stayed on in Alachua County taking on the demanding job of managing the Citrus Grove by herself. By then she had also begun writing short stories about the people and culture of Cross Creek. In 1930 she published the first of these stories in Scribner's Magazine. In 1933 her short story, Gal Youngin, was recognized with the O. Henry Prize for the best short story of the year. At first, her stories reflected the observation of an amused outsider watching the local residents with an affectionate sense of superiority. But as her editor, Maxwell Perkins, remarked, by the time Rawlings published her first novel, South Moon Under, in 1933, her almost condescending attitude had changed to one of understanding and admiration for the enduring spirit and simple life of the Florida natives. Her portrayal of poor rural whites was praised for its realism and led to comparisons to writers like James Fenimore Cooper and Mark Twain. Her rich descriptions of the landscape she loved invited comparisons to Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Other Florida-based books would follow, including 1935's Golden Apples, 1940's When the Whippoorwill, 1942's Cross Creek and Cross Creek Cookery, and 1950's Jacob's Ladder. However, it is the yearling for which she is best remembered. Published in 1938, The Yearling tells the story of young Jody Baxter and his pet fawn as he comes of age in rural north central Florida in the aftermath of the Civil War. While the novel has become a children's favorite, it is equally satisfying to adult readers. As Rawlings wrote to her editor, I think it will only incidentally be a book for boys. I hope there will be nostalgic implications for mature people, for we never feel more sensitively than an extreme youth. Indeed, the novel was well received by mature readers. William Soskin wrote in the New York Herald Tribune Book Review, The Yearling is an education far removed from our dreary urban formulas. The story of a boy and an animal becomes one of the most exquisite I have ever read. The Yearling was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1939, and Rawlings came to be recognized as one of the nation's greatest writers. In 1941, Rawlings married hotelier Norton S. Baskin. She divided her time between Cross Creek, a beach house in St. Augustine, and a farm in Van Hornsville, New York. The Sojourner, her final book, strays from her Floridian literary roots, taking place on a farm in Michigan. She died suddenly in St. Augustine in 1953 while preparing notes for a new book. She is buried in Antioch Cemetery in Island Grove, seven miles from her Cross Creek home. She bequeathed the home to the University of Florida Foundation and her manuscripts and papers to the University of Florida Library. The home itself has been preserved as the Marjorie Kennan Rawlings State Park since 1970. The property remains virtually unchanged from the time Rawlings lived in it. 
Rawlings typewriter rest on a table in the front porch. In 2004, more than 20,000 people visited her home seen today as both a literary landmark and as an important authentic example of Southern vernacular architecture. Today, Rawlings is remembered for her vivid and beautiful portraits of North Central Florida and its people, and she is also remembered for the pioneering spirit, strength, and determination she shared with its people.